Hello, my name is Henry Enfrey, and this is an App Game Kit game development tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to make our character jump. And not only will our character be able to jump, our character will be able to jump onto a platform. Now, as you can see, I'm in paint.net, and here was our background. And you can see that I've made a change to our background. You see, our background no longer has this red floor like we had previously. What I did was I took this eyedropper tool, I made sure that we have blue here, and then all I did was just paint it out the floor. And that's how I took out the floor. So now that's why our scene looks like this. And the reason I took out the floor is because we're going to use this road that I made as a floor. And the way that I made this road was I just started with a regular scene with the image, click resize, and put in 500 by 90 and then clicked OK. And that's how I got the roadway. And then I just took blue over here and, and I painted it. And then just, so I just took this highlighter tool and then turned the color to white and then just kept painting in you know, these the marker lines here. And then I just kept copying and pasting them. And so that's how I got my roadway. Okay, so that's how I made my road in my scene. So now all I'm going to do is just save these two things. Save the, let's resave the background. I'm going to overwrite this background. And then I'm going to save the road. We're going to call it floor. Okay, so that's all we need for what we're going to do is jumping. So let's go to our code. Okay, here's our code. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I gave the floor an ID of 14. I mean, naturally, you would think that the floor should go in a sequence, such as one, two, three, and this should be like three or four or something, right? But the reason that I gave our floor this far out number is so it don't clash with the bullets. which I gave an ID of three and seven. And that's so that when we try to play our game, we don't get errors saying that those closer numbers were already used. So that's why I gave our floor this four out number of 14. Okay, so our four has an ID of 14. We took the name of this picture, which we call floor.png, and we're just attaching it to this ID here. Okay, and next we have our jump timer. Now, the way our jump is going to work is we're going to use the A button to initiate the jump. And when the A button is pressed, our player is going to go up for 80 seconds. But then after those 80 seconds, that's when our player will start to come down and descend until our player lands on the floor. So that's what this jump timer is for. It's just a time how long our player will go up until it's time for him to come back down again. And then we have the floor's coordinates. And this has to do with where our floor is going to appear on the screen. Remember, X in computer programming has to do with the left and right, the horizontal positions. And Y has to do with the vertical positions or the up and down positions of our objects. And this floor X part says, as far as the horizontal position of the floor, it's going to start on the far left side of the screen, which will be the zero coordinate. And this floor Y part says that our floor is going to start 470 pixels down from the top. So in other words, our floor is going to be at the bottom of the screen, as a floor normally would be. Okay, so next we're just finalizing our floor being on screen and our floor being at the bottom of the screen. So again, we're just taking our picture, our sprite or picture that we gave an ID of 14, and then we're just putting it into this function here, and then we're just taking our location. 
We're just taking our location and inserting it here to finalize everything. And then here, our set sprite size. All we're doing is just resizing the floor. We're making our floor longer. Our floor is going to be so long, it's going to go 2,000 pixels off screen. And our floor is going to also be a lot taller than we made it in this program right here. I mean, this floor is going to be a lot bigger than this. And it's just making the floor taller so that it too can stretch off screen and look normal like a floor would. Okay, so that's what that does. Here we're making up gravity here. Remember, our player has an idea of two. See, so remember from last time, our player has an idea of two, so we're using this two. So, our player has an idea of two, and our floor has an idea of 14. So, this part says that if the player is touching the floor, or if the player is jumping, Because between these two, if jump equals one, then that means that the player is jumping. So again, so this part says if the player is touching the floor or if the player is jumping, then that means that the player is not falling. Otherwise, else means otherwise, the player is falling. And that's where we get this fall equals one part. I hope this makes sense. And these are just variables. But what we did was take these variables and we just attached them to the actual actions. These are Henry's coordinates right here. And if this variable is zero, Henry Y equals Henry Y plus zero means that Henry's not going down. Otherwise, if falling equals one, again, in computer programming, Y plus means to go down. And this will mean that Henry's going down at three pixels per second. So if fall equals one, that means Henry's going down. And make sure you close your if statements with this end if here. Okay, so here's our jump part. Okay, so this says if somebody presses the A button on the keyboard, then that initiates the jump. Or that's when jump equals one. So that means if jump equals one, or if the jump is initiated, then th this turns off the gravity that we set up here. See, Henry's no longer falling if, if fall equals zero. So we turned off the gravity, and then that starts our timer. And, and our timer goes up. So before our timer reaches 80 seconds, Henry will, will continue to go up. Remember, Y and minus means to go up in computer programming. And Henry will be going up at two pixels per second. You know, instead of movement, we could have wrote two here. But instead of two, we put this movement variable here. So Henry will be going up at two pixels per second. But after 80 seconds, Henry's going to be going down. Remember, Y and plus means to go down in computer programming. This means Henry's going to go down at two pixels per second. And once again, instead of putting movement, we could have put two here. And we meant the same thing. But in computer programming, it's always good to work with variables in case you need to interact with other variables more easily in your code. So that's why I always tend to use variables. Okay, so this is essentially our jump part right here. And make sure you close out your if statement with this end if here. And then this part says whenever our player lands, you remember our player has an ID of two and the floor has an ID of 14. And this says after our player lands and the jump timer is well above 80 seconds, when our player lands, that's when all the movement stops. That's when our fall stops. That's when the jump timer stops. And that's when our whole jump process stops. Whenever jump equals zero, it cancels out this. So essentially, once Henry lands on the floor or platform, then Henry won't go down no more. Like we, like we set up here. 
with the zero here. The zeros here too. Okay, and make sure you again end all the if statements. End if here and end if here. And basically end if here too. This end if actually closes out this if right here. So okay, so that's our jump. So let's go ahead and launch our game and see what this looks like. Okay, so our player landed on the Floor. Good, that's what we wanted. So when I press the jump button A, player goes up 80 seconds, and after 80 seconds it comes back down. And it lands back on the floor again. Okay, so good, it's working out perfectly. So, and then, you know, our movement still works, our background still looks good, and everything else looks pretty good. Well, never mind this part up here. This is just how many frames this whole game is going per second. So everything works out perfectly. And that's the end of this tutorial. Feel free to take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. Until next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>